hi guys welcome back to my channel we are finally back up north um, it's been about I think three weeks since the flood happened up here at um, Wixom Lake it is currently let's see 7 32 p.m. Um, Sunday June 14th and it is like 60 degrees outside so it's a little bit chilly out here especially for like this time of the year I would expect it to be like a lot hotter than this but anyways I wanted to do an update on the lake here um, honestly not too much has changed um, it still pretty much looks the same so I'll show you guys behind me there was um, a boat here a sensation um, and they finally just took it out the other day and then there was another boat over here a pontoon and they just took that out as well and that pontoon used to be over here like right in this area on the other side of the dock and um, obviously they had to take out the docks and move them um, to get to the boats so I wanted to show what everything looks like and here's a jet ski lift they get the jet ski off the jet ski actually ended up in the neighbor's yard over there during the flood so they were able to put it on the trailer and take it out so they didn't have any issues with that it was just mostly the boats because of the drop-off Okay, so over here is the back of the boat lift, so obviously the motors would hang right over here, and then the drop-off would be out here. So there's not that much room for a crane or anything to come and take the boat out. So um, they figured it out and took it out and everything, and I'll post some videos and a couple clips. the drop off I don't want to get too close because I don't I don't want to fall down the sand or anything but yeah this is what it looks like three weeks later and the water did go down more um, I'm hoping they fix it soon but I don't know if they will but you can see all the tree stumps and if you look closely so right here that piece of wood right there that's on this huge tree right here 
that's actually a piece of dock it looks like um it must have got washed away from the flood but yeah i mean it's really peaceful you don't hear the water or anything and it's just you just hear the birds chirp and everything which is really nice and cool but it's just crazy how much water went down from the flood i just wanted to do an update and show you guys um, what it looks like now a few weeks later but yeah it's just it's crazy and like this dock over here is all crooked as you can see it's not even like straight anymore like it was it's just unbelievable like what a flood can do and the damages it caused which I will get into that later so you can see all the damage on this side of the road and it's really deep over here and it goes all the way down to there so here's all the debris from the side of the road and over the bridge here this water So look at all that it's all all of this caved in. And you can hear the water rushing. And you can see trees over there that are down. Look at all this damage down here from the flood. It's crazy. Oh my gosh, look at this, wow, look at this, that's crazy to see it in person, look how high this is off the ground on me. So all this caved in from the flood, you can see up there on top of the bridge. There's some trees, but wow, it's an, it's crazy to see all of this in person. And look all over here, you can see all the debris all over here, from the trees and everything. So there's more damage at this house. You can see all this cement and everything all broken up. And there's the gas station, and then right next to the gas station is the Edenville Market. So this side here is a little bit down the street from where I was just showing you by the bridge. And you can see all of the debris. And this bridge over here is Curtis Road Bridge. So you can see all the debris on it but I don't know how close I can get to that bridge but I'll try to get closer for you guys so over there you can see a bunch of trees and debris and there's some hanging off the bridge over there and so here's the bridge closer up and you can see all the trees and the debris on it so here's what the bridge looks like so there's a bunch of debris and stuff on it and then obviously it's all closed off okay so we're back closer to the house now and I don't know if I showed this last time on the video but this side of the road when you're coming into the neighborhood to the right um, it used to be a lot higher when we were up here last time so wherever you see the wet sand in the mud that is how high the um, water was last time we were here so over here on this side is where all these people were coming to see and look at the lake and everything over here is where that pontoon boat was I think I showed it to you guys when we were on the golf cart um, when we came to look at the steam shovel so if you didn't see that video make sure you go check it out after you watch this one 
but yeah here's the water the water used to be a lot higher and it's just it looks like it's just getting washed out and the sand is getting washed out and oh my gosh look at this it looks like handlebars from a bike that is so cool and crazy they think that is in the sand but you can see some debris right underneath it as well but like I said over here there was a pontoon boat and they took it out but all this sand like just fell down from the rain and the storms that they had the past week or a couple weeks over here so yeah it's just I can't believe this used to be a lake and hi guys I'm back so anyways I'm with my little sister again Andrea hello so she was in the last video about um, the whole flood and um, revealing the steam shovel and everything so if you haven't seen it yet make sure you go back and watch it after you watch this video um, we were just talking about like all of the stuff that's going on with the residents not just on Wixom Lake but other lakes as well and just like the type of damage and everything that they have from the floods and stuff and it's just really really sad and it's just crazy to even like imagine that this actually happened to thousands and thousands of people but she actually has more detail than I do on all this stuff because she lives up here so she's going to like explain everything to you guys and tell you what's been going on the past few weeks I don't I don't know like really where to start so I guess you could say like there's a lot of things that the news doesn't really cover obviously there's a lot of like assumptions that aren't true um, cat, like minor like things like that um, for example, here on Wixom, we live on a road that we do have city water, but a lot of people haven't hooked up to city water yet. So a lot of people are still using their wells, and it depends on the county too. So, like, for example, a lot of Gladwin County doesn't have city water, whereas, like, certain roads in Midland County do have city water. And so something that's going on right now is people's wells are drying up because a lot of people have, like, like 20-foot wells versus 200 foot wells so their water is like going away obviously and um now they have to pay like 17 grand just to get water into their house because they haven't connected or they don't have pipes going to their road um stuff like that uh we were without gas for two weeks yeah about um, two weeks yeah because the gas was like along the bridge that broke which is m30 so like the gas lines were with the bridge and when that broke like our whole entire side of the lake lost gas so that's like another thing that happened with us um obviously all of people's stuff is still like on the sand there's boat stuck um, I know Olivia mentioned a little bit about how we just got our boats out, thank gosh, but um, a, a lot of stuff like that um, is still going on. People are still battling how to get it out. A lot of people don't have enough property around their house to get equipment down. Um, they don't have enough sand in front of their, their um, like, seawalls which is starting to cause like people to lose their seawalls like our, our neighbor um they just got a brand new seawall two years ago and it's steel and it's super expensive and um now they're battling with the fact that it's gonna go away as more rain comes as the uh sand keeps eroding so our whole entire lake's gonna change people are gonna lose their property property value has gone down people are still missing their stuff there's still boats next to the dam on the rocks like there's still so much stuff that a lot of people don't know about yeah that's just crazy that's so sad like yeah that it happened to so many people it's not like oh it's just like a flood and that's it like no it washed out a bunch of lake like four different lakes and it yeah. broke the dams and it caused more flooding in midland and in sanford and even around here so yeah. i mean all the water I don't know, like a lot of people don't really know about how this all works. So basically the water starts <laughs> on Seacord Lake and then which flows down to Smallwood, the, then to Wixom and then to Sanford all through dam systems. That water all goes through Midland, Bay City, Saginaw, all those areas and eventually goes out to the Great Lakes. So now all those people are going through all of like 
the water that has all of these boats in it, houses that flew down the river, like all of this nasty, nasty stuff, all of this debris everywhere is all going into the Great Lakes, is all stuck in trees. Like uh, there was a couple of videos of this house that was literally like in trees. Another big thing is like small wood and sea cord are not two lakes that had dam breaches, but they're mm -hmm. connected. Basically, Smallwood and Secord are two lakes above Sanford and Wixom. So they had to lower their water 10 feet, 8 feet, whatever it was, um, so that there was no further damage to Midland and to Sanford than what has already happened. So they don't know when they're going to get water back on their lake. So it's like tons, of, like thousands of people that are being affected by this and being affected by all this erosion and um, a lot of people don't realize that Smallwood and Secord are also going through all of this stuff and are also losing their water so there's a lot a lot more to know and to see. On Secord um, my boyfriend's parents have a place and they their lake went through flooding just like ours did but they didn't get as much water as we did because of the fact that we're three lakes down from where the water, where it starts flowing. They had to go through debris floating everywhere, jet skis being misplaced, boats being misplaced, houses flooding. Um, luckily their house didn't flood, but it uh, tore their seawall out, so now they have to replace their seawall, and um, they don't know when they're gonna get their water back. Now, the people that own the dam, own all of the dams around here so it's not just um, our dam or Wixom Lakes dam it's also Sanford, Secord and Smallwood who are all um, having to get lowered because the guy who owns them doesn't want to get sued more so they're like checking all of the dams to make sure this never happens again so any small things that show up during ins inspection will cause them to all lose water. Yeah a lot of like, if you think about it, four entire lakes of um, property value in Texas, like, that's all a huge deal. Yeah, it is. And it generates a lot of money, so if all these people lose all of that, yeah. like, value, that sucks. That's, that's yeah, a lot that's less crazy. taxes for these areas, and a lot of people don't realize how much these areas survive on what people call trunk slammers or people that um, have weekend homes up here. Um, these communities wouldn't survive and they wouldn't even be a community without um, all of the, tour not tourism, but um, all of the people that come up here to enjoy these lakes. So right. there's definitely a lot of other things that I wish the media covered. Right, because the media only says so much and that's it. And yeah. it's like, do I believe the media? Do I not believe the media? And there's so many different stories going on, so you don't know what's true or not, and what they're missing, and what details they're not getting. So, coming up here after uh, being up here three weeks ago, it's still kind of like shocking. Like, you just don't believe it that it, the lake is actually the way it is right now with no water in it. Um, I mean, that's just like millions and millions of gallons of water that just totally washed out in an hour. And yeah. there's nothing left. It's just, I don't know, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So. And it's still like, it's a sight to see in person. <laughs> Pictures, videos, nothing does it justice until you come and look and see it mm -hmm. in person. Right. Like, I'm all about like doing your research, looking it up online, but you really can't understand what these people are going through, what it looks like anything like that until you see it, until you speak to people, um, unless you hear the stories of the people that lost their homes that, you know, we have a post office kind of by the bridge that Olivia just showed you, and there's a house pushed up to the uh, post office that was 50 yards away. So it, the water like blew it off its foundation. And, and that bridge is like 75 feet above the water level. Yeah, it was really high. Yeah, the bridge like, is really high. I had high. no idea it was that high up. Yeah, so the fact that the water got that high and pushed houses off that from yeah, that's at crazy. that high of an elevation, like, people never thought that would happen. Never. I would, could never even imagine, like, the r bridges and, like, the roads and the cement, like, just caving in and just, like, the houses getting picked up like it's nothing and just washed away, like... 
like concrete is just so hard and so solid and everything and like you could never imagine something like that happening but it happened yeah. and, and there's just, like it's a, devastating yeah and there's a it. ton of videos of on like facebook that i know i've shared i i'm sure olivia's shared um of like literally entire houses getting swept down the river so fast that it in and, and there's another one of like a boat on its lift just getting smashed under um the m30 bridge or no, I'm not Sanford. No, yeah, the M10 bridge, yeah, of it like just getting smashed like it's nothing, like something as big as a boat and a lift looking like a piece of paper, yeah, getting crunched up. And like how Mark explained it on the news, it's like a toilet bowl basically, like yeah. everything. Like it was so crazy how fast and how everything happened. But yeah, we're still going through a lot of the after effects. I'm sure we will for a very long time. We don't know when it's gonna go back up. We've heard a lot of things, there's a lot of rumors, there's a lot of facts that aren't really facts, so it's kind of a waiting game. Um, a lot of people are planning on investing in places on different lakes for a little while until the water gets back up. A lot of people are letting their houses go back to the bank because they can't afford to pay all of this when there's nothing to pay there. for. It. <laughs> yeah, a lot of so. people are selling their boats. Um, selling their they're trying to sell their places but mm -hmm. banks aren't even loaning money for properties along these lakes right now right. because there's there's so many unknowns so there's definitely definitely a lot of things and it's not even the flood that's going on either it's covid19 going on too so you got that you know with businesses being slow and businesses closing and not even reopening up because of that and then now since this flood happened up here those businesses are just completely wiped out like there's no chance some of them will even ever open again and when we were younger we used to go to Sanford and go to I think it was Lanny's restaurant Lanny's Lanny's mm -hmm. restaurant in Sanford and I don't think they're ever going to open again yeah they how long were they open for oh really long time my grandparents always went there um yeah but you know, hope you hope, and there's there's a lot of um, positive things that go on when um, you have such strong communities like this. So I'm sure they'll open back up um, with time. But it's hopefully it's, it's very sad and to to know that a lot of these businesses not only caved because of this COVID shutdown, but now because on top of that all of this stuff that was going on. And you know, we were all so excited. It was um, Memorial Day weekend was coming yeah. up. We were all looking, you know, Edenville Market um, bought $20,000 worth of meat and, and alcohol for this weekend, expecting big crowds, a lot of people as normal and just like that, nothing. Like people yeah. had just bought in boats two days prior, put them in anticipating getting it done before the weekend so they didn't have to wait in traffic okay we're back um my memory card got full so anyways as we were saying it was a few days before memorial weekend when this whole flood happened yeah so um obviously a lot of people were anticipating a fun weekend and all of a sudden you know we heard we were gonna get four inches of rain but that's not like something that's devastating. We got like eight feet of water and right. it, it wasn't a flood. And that's, that's another big misconception is it wasn't a flood. This was all a man made issue because of people not doing their jobs correctly, not lowering the lakes in the way that they should have, not um, making corrections on the dams, fixing spill gates, um, ever, all of that. It, it This was not because of a flood. It was because because of a, um, of people constantly overlooking things and uh, a lot of people blame residents on Wixom Lake. I've heard a lot of comments like, oh well maybe maybe rich people shouldn't dam up rivers to live on lakes. And um, that's that's really, I don't, Ignorant. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't agree with that by any means. Um, a lot of the people that live on these lakes aren't wealthy by any means. Uh, yeah, they're pretty affordable lakes to be on, for yeah. one. Um, and for two, um, nobody wanted this. Uh, right. We're all going through it. None of us have it better than any others. Um, obviously, you know, Sanford and the people downstream had no idea this was coming. We were lucky because we kind of had a warning. Water rose slowly. 
um, even though it was quick, it wasn't 10 feet in an hour, you know, it was five inches an hour. So um, we had a lot more time to prepare. We were a lot luckier, but we're all going through it. We're all together. Um, we're all reaping the same issues and going through and right. getting the same benefits a lot. Um, we couldn't thank um, a lot of these churches and a lot of the people that have been donating. Um, I know so many people have lost everything, so all of these donations, the monetary donations, everything has really made a big impact on a lot of people's lives too. So yeah, there's a there's a definitely a lot of things that have been going on. We'll update you more as more things arise. Um, I think we pretty much covered a lot of it. Um, stay tuned for more videos. I'm sure Olivia will be keeping you guys updated mm -hmm. on things like that. So yeah, yeah. Um, we plan on being up here in a couple or like two or three weeks from now. So if I hear anything else or whatever from my sister and stuff then I'll let you know and spread the word on it but other than that I think we're just gonna call it the night because it's getting late so anyways um thanks for watching my video if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions or just anything to talk about about the floods and stuff we can chit chat and like my video and if you haven't yet make sure you hit that notification bell down below so you're notified when I upload new videos so thanks for watching and thanks for listening to us talk for yeah. 20 minutes or Sorry whatever it was. Sorry it wasn't perfect, but, we're but kinda, yeah. we wanted it to be more of a conversation than right. something that was staged. or Yeah, because I don't know. I just feel like if you vlog, it's like more real and like you're actually a part of it than just to sit down and have a conversation between me and her. So yeah. I will see you guys next video and thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Bye.